another element that we need to produce sound is breathing. Yeah. Um, breathing, the best way for us to breathe as cellists is through the mouth because it's like a bottle with a thing on the top. You just, and the flow of air or energy can go in and out. You do this, you know, sometimes we dive, we do this, <gasps> see you at the end. And then every once in a while, like, it's not connected to the music. You're not breathing. That's why if you learn to sing, you will put a little comma, you know, wherever you need to, to inhale. And you don't do that when you play and it does not apply to your bow. So when you start to play, I want to see this, or... Uh, you need to breathe! And follow... You become the music, physically. And, it, and at the moment is... You dive in, you do something, and at the end of the piece, <sighs> I'm done. <laughs> and that shouldn't be the case. So let's see if you can add to the, to the supermarket list. I'm not telling you when and where. We can discuss it. But first, I need to see that it's functioning. <sighs> it's part of the music, OK? Let's try. And less accents, if possible. Breathe, mouth. Keep the mouth a little open. Now breathe. Yes. Elbows. Now breathe. Ah. Feet on the ground. Okay, good. Much better, much better. Now we add one more thing to the list. Something I talked in the previous lesson, but you were not here, so I have to repeat it. If I play a low D, Re, on a C string, with a slow bow. There's a lot of resistance, it's a thick string. It sounds good. I don't need a lot of bow. If I play this D here, Re, with the same speed, same weight. <laughs> it's not so nice, even on a million, three million dollar cello. So, the higher you go, the faster bow you need. To get, without decoration. With decoration, but the bow has to move. Now, if you apply it to the piece, if you play this scale, fine, fine. Now, A string. The whole bow. Not, it's not that bad, but it's as slow as a D string. One, two, three, and follow. Okay, higher you go, more bow you, you need. Breathe before. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, not T. Now, move, move. Yes, can you follow the left elbow with the right? So, T. Make. Yes. Do you hear a difference? Mm -hmm. If the pianist hears a difference, we are on. She's deciding because she's not a cellist. Yeah. See, this movement, resistment, create tension. Just a little bit, but you follow. I mean, that's what you would do anyway. See, if I would take a little rope and would glue it to your forehead and then one corner to your elbow and another corner to this elbow. What will become is what I call the human triangle, which is the, the dinner posture. This human triangle is alive because we are not machines. We, we go places, we do things, but we never break the human triangle. Mm -hmm. We never do this <laughs> subconsciously because it breaks our human posture. We will uh, subconsciously just will follow. When you play cello, try to keep this triangle. So when you move on a down ball, ah, I feel really comfortable. Ah, who said I need to do this? Yeah, okay, so try to keep the human triangle with you. Now, the higher you go and the more bow you use, the more body movement you need to implement. Yeah, if you move this arm a lot, probably you need the reaction. So I want you to play the scale now. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, try. Yeah. Do you hear? E e ho. You produce the sound faster, both. Oh, yes, yes.